the first example is asking us to figure out the centroid of a right triangle. Given that we're going to pick a current stem such that it is centered right here. So we're looking for the centroid of this shape. They're given us this distance B and they're given us that distance H. If you look at the lecture, you've seen that the definition of centroid comes directly from the definition of the weighted average. Not the arithmetic, but the weighted average. So, for continuous system, the definition is as follow. Double integral on the top, double integral on the bottom, dy dx, dy dx. So obviously, the bottom part is just the area. The top part, we're just going to squeeze a little x in there. That's it. For the y, obviously, you replace the top one by y. So, I know some of you may not have had double integral or triple integral. In this class, we're only going to do one dimension or two dimensions. But you can expand it to three dimensions, four dimensions, same idea. In general, forget about what you've learned in Calc 2. If you're looking for the length of a function, any function, you are going to use a single integral. And you will see the definition of how to do so both in calculus and in C270. It's just going to take 1 plus dy dx squared. And the proof is very easy. But it's a single integral. So whenever you calculate the length of something, you use a single integral. If you're after the area, so now there is two dimensions, one dimension, two dimensions. Then naturally you're going to integrate along the x and integrate along the y. You need two integrals. And you can go either dy dx or dx dy. And I will explain which one we're going to pick. So that conceptually, that's how it works. And then whenever you want to figure out the volume, three dimension, then naturally, you're going to use triple integral, dz, dy, dx. And this works in Cartesian. This will work in Porter, spherical, any current system. So that's the idea. So for us, if they're asking us for the centroid of an area, then naturally, we have to have a double integral. So I know in calculus 2, they told you that the area under the curve if this is function fx, was fx dx. And that's fine. We memorize this, whatever. What I'm going to show you is how this was derived in order for us not to have to learn double integral where we're in Cal 2. You will see that this is actually equivalent to 2 integral. And whatever. Where you have nothing in between. This is the same thing. As you integrate the inner integration, you will end up with either the shell or the disk method. So the advantage of remembering length one integral, area double integral, volume triple integral, is that as you're going to integrate the, integrate, uh, the integ uh, integration inside, you're going to pick up the stuff that you had to learn in Calc 2, shell and disk method. So, let's see how that works. It's very, very, very easy. Let me go back to our problem. Let me make space. All right. So, here's how that works. All we have to do as we're trying to solve for the numerator or the denominator is simply to identify the limit of integration. Because after that, it's a piece of cake. So that's all we have to do. The recipe is right there. All you have to do is memorize this and try to figure out what are the four limits of integration. The only thing that we have to remember is in this class, 
you will always be able to use dy dx, not dx dy. dy dx means that you're going to consider a little rectangle which is vertical and you're going to spam this vertex, this rectangle of width dx from the initial value of x all the way up to the maximum value of x. Okay? So that's what the integration means. You're going to add all those little rectangle. And the thickness of the rectangle is dx. If you want to use dx dy, you're going to do the same thing except you're going to use horizontal little rectangle that you're going to translate up and down. The problem with doing this method is you cannot use y as a function of x for your function. You're going to have to calculate the inverse function and calculate first x as a function of y. In some cases, we have to do this. For example, if you're dealing with a parabola, because if you use a vertical one, you start at this function, and you obviously end at the same function, which means that if this function is the same as this function, the integration is zero. So in this case, you have no choice but to pick horizontal little rectangle. And you start at this function, and you end at that function. But those functions are not y as a function of x, but x as a function of y. So that requires an extra step for us to calculate the inverse function. So if we don't have to, let's just save time and always try to do those center of mass and those area using vertical little rectangle. And all the problems you can have in this class should allow you to pick the vertical one. Therefore, we're always going to use dy dx. So how do we handle two integrals? When you have two integral with two dummy variable, dy, dx, the first one that comes, the dy, must refer to the inner integral. Those guys go together. And then, once you have integrated this, then you take care of the other integral. And if you have a third one for dz, a green one, then you do this one last. So you always do the integration from the inner outward. And as I mentioned, let's focus on the denominator where we just have a one here. So I just put one. This is nothing but the area. So how are we gonna figure out those four limits of integration? First, let's identify the limit for dx. That is, we need to identify the minimum value of x from where we start drawing those little rectangle and the maximum value of x. In this particular case, we start here. This is where the minimum value of x is. Well, according to our current system, obviously this value of x is zero. Bang, we put zero right here. Then as you draw this little rectangle, just look at the value of x where this is the last place of your little rectangle after you spam the whole area. Look that up. Obviously this one is x is equal to b. Done. So those are the two limits of integration for the x variable. Very easy. For the y, instead of looking at the initial value of x and the final value of x, we're going to look at the two functions from where your little rectangle start and end. So obviously, your little rectangle end at this function. Let's call it f2. And they all start at that function. Let's call it F1. So that means F1 is going to be here at the bottom and F2 is going to be here at the top. That's it. So what kind of function is this? F2 is trivial, right? It's a straight line and it has a zero slope. So we know the equation of a line. Y is equal to mx plus b. If the slope is zero for F2, then we remember from pre-cal class, math 135, that if, if it's a straight line, we can use y is equal to mx plus b, and if the slope is zero, m is zero. And b is the y-intercept, this guy. But b is given to us, that's h. So this function is nothing else but y is equal to h. Or 
or just H. Let's do the same thing for F1. Again, F1 is also a straight line, so it can be expressed by 1 is equal to mx plus b. This straight line starts from the origin, therefore we know right away b is equal to 0. And now all we have to do is calculate the slope. But again, this is just math. We remember this from Math 135. The slope is the rise over the run. In this case, h over b. So that's the equation of F1. That's where our little rectangle always starts. Therefore, that's our lower limit, hb over x. So really, to calculate the centroid, all we have to do is identify the shape that we're interested in, draw our little vertical rectangle, identify where they start, where they end, that will give us a two limit of integration for the x, and then identify the two functions where our rectangle starts and our rectangle ends. And that's it. <laughs> now we can integrate. So how are we going to integrate this? You will notice that the inner integral may have x's in there. That's okay. It means that once we finish integrating the blue integral, since the blue integral uses y as a dummy variable, y should never show up after you do that integration. It will be replaced by whatever is on the limit. Therefore, after you finish the blue integration, the inner one, you should have a function of x, which is perfect because the next integral is, a, is about dx. So it fits perfectly. Let's integrate the first one. Let's consider this integral and ignore everything else. Obviously, we're trying to integrate 1, so the integral is y for a trivial. Then we're going to substitute this and evaluate it between h and h over bx. So far, so good. We keep the outside envelope. We don't touch that yet. And let's continue to finish the integration of the inner one. Obviously, this is going to give us h minus h minus bx. Again, we're going to duplicate what's outside, dx from 0 to b. This is, and I forgot which one is which, either what we used to learn as a shell method or the this method. That's how they got it. All they did is they did the inner integral, and that's it. Okay? So, now can we integrate this? Yeah, it's a polynomial, trivial. So this will become hx minus h over b, x squared divided by 2. And we need to integrate this between 0 and b. As we substitute x with b, we end up with hb minus hb squared divided by 2b, minus 0 plus 0. It looks ugly, but let's try to simplify it. There is a b on both the top and the bottom, so hb minus hb divided by 2. Therefore, we can combine those two, and we end up with hb divided by 2. Does that make sense? Yeah. Is that the area of a rangle triangle? Of course, yes. That works perfectly fine. Okay? So now all we have to do is do the same thing with the numerator. But the beauty of this method is we already have done all the work. We have identified the four limit of integration for the area case. The top one is exactly the same. The only difference is we squeeze a little x. So let's do it. The numerator will be 0 to b, doesn't change, h over bx, and h. Now, the only difference is we have to squeeze the x in there. So, how are we going to integrate this? Remember, we always start from the inner integral and then we expand out. So, we are concerned about the dy. y is our dummy variable. So, this is the variable. Everything else that is not y, as far as y is con concerned, is just a stupid constant. Therefore, x doesn't belong there. x is just a constant with respect to dy. We can just take it out. 
this, this therefore exactly the same as zero to B. X has been kicked out. H over BX, H, DY, DX. And we're back to one. Up. <laughs> now we can do this easily. We just did it earlier. This will give us zero to B, X. And this was Y evaluated between H and H over BX. And again, we carry all the stupid DX. We've done it right here, remember? 